Welcome everybody. Um, we've got the, another television that we are taking a look at today. And uh, this is actually a first for me. This is my first 8K television uh, that we're going to be talking about. So I'm kind of excited about that. This is the 2022 uh, Samsung Neo QLED 8K QN800D. That's a mouthful. But um, it's their uh, it's not their top of the line uh, 8K television, it's right underneath it. Um, the B uh, signifies that it's the 2022 model, the A is the 2021. Uh, but uh, first I want to talk a little bit about what sets this uh, apart from the top of the line, the flagship model, the 8K, the Q900D. So we'll talk about that. So probably the biggest difference between uh, the Q800D and the Q900D is going to be the television brightness. Uh, now Samsung kind of has this really confusing, convoluted way of, of telling customers how bright the television is. Uh, it's going to be uh, their Quantum HDR uh, in the specs. So Quantum HDR 32X or 48X, uh, things like that. It doesn't really tell you exactly how bright the television is, but um, when you dig in a little bit deeper, you can kind of get a little bit better idea of, of what that actually means. So the kind of consensus is that um, that 32 or that 48, it's a multiplier from a, a specific base, uh, so like a hundredth. Uh, so a 32X would be 32 times 100, 3200 nits of brightness uh, at its peak in HDR. Um, so this here, 3200 versus the Q900B, 4800, um, pretty bright television, both of them really, but uh, the Q900 definitely is going to be a little bit brighter. Now comparing that to OLED sets, uh, you know, you're looking at a significant jump. Um, QLED has always been uh, a much, much better at producing bright images. Um, OLED sets, you're probably going to top out a thousand nits or less, so that'll kind of give you a, a good comparison there. Um, the other uh, difference between the two is uh, the sound, um, slightly higher uh, wattage and slightly more speakers in the Q900D uh, versus the Q800. Uh, and then some cosmetic differences. The, the, the bezel uh, on the television is going to be smaller than the 900. Um, the thickness of the television is going to be uh, a little bit um, you know, thinner than the 900. Uh, so things like that. And then the big difference, price. Um, you know, this television right here, the 800B, retails for $3,500. The 900B uh, retails for $5,000. So pretty, pretty big uh, jump in, in price. Uh, so is that worth the, the differences uh, between the two televisions? You know, you can, you can certainly decide that, but there's not a whole lot of differences in between the two um, televisions. Um, in my opinion, to justify the, uh, the big price uh, difference. So there's that. So as I talked about, this is an 8K television. Now, if you go and get an 8K TV and you tell anybody about it, you're probably going to get at least somebody that says, that asks you, why are you getting an 8K television? There's nothing broadcast in 8K. You can't even get 8K content very easily. Um, what's the point of getting 8K television? And, and you know, to some degree, there's there's some um, you know there's some, some truth to that. Uh, it's a valid question, uh, but really, you know, there, it comes down to really two things. So, one is yes, you can talk about upscaling. Uh, you know, today's televisions have uh, processors within them that will upscale with lower resolution content up to 8K resolution. Uh, this year's uh, Samsung TV, uh, you know, Samsung boasts that it has 20 neural networks within its processor in order to uh, look at content and really upscale it with a good amount of accuracy and clarity. Now, whether or not that ends up being the case, you know, we'll find out, but you know, it really sounds cool. Your television has 20 neural networks, it, you know, it's just kind of a, a cool sounding uh, um, specification there. Um, now, but, but really the biggest, uh, in my opinion, the most important aspect of getting an 8K television at this point is that 
Samsung at least puts their best features, their best technology in the 8K televisions versus the 4K. And they've been doing this for years. I talked about this in the previous videos um, on the Q90R. If you want to get the best backlight, the best brightness, you're going to have to go with the 8K television. And, and you know, it's, it's marketing to some degree. Samsung wants to sell their 8K televisions and so they do it that way. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea, the, the flagship 4K uh, model, the Q, let's see, what is it, QN95B, that's 2022's uh, flagship model. The peak brightness, you're looking at somewhere around 2,000 nits uh, versus 3,200 for this and, and 4,800 for the, for the flagship 8K. Uh, so if you want the brightest panel, you're going to have to go with an 8K set. Um, yeah, the other um, piece of technology that, that is greatly improved with the 8K televisions is the local dimming zones. Um, you're looking at almost double going from the flagship 4K to uh, even not, uh, to, to this, not the flagship uh, 8K, but the, the second in line. Um, you know, set a little uh, over 700 to a little over 1300. If we use last year's um, specs, Samsung really doesn't release the number of local dimming zones, so um, we don't have that information yet for the 2022 models, but we can assume that's going to be at least what 2021. All right, so let's talk about this television and some of the features. Uh, first, we'll go ahead and talk about the uh, mini LED local dimming system. Uh, this year's model has been upgraded from a 12-bit to a 14-bit um, uh, local dimming system, which really doesn't sound like a lot, you know, talking about two bits, but uh, it actually makes a huge difference uh, in the gradations of brightness that you have with this television. So it's over four times the amount of uh, steps of brightness. Uh, you're going from um, a little over 4,000 to a little over 16,000 steps of brightness. So it's really uh, fine-tuned how bright the backlight is uh, in this television uh, versus uh, last year's model. Um, the number of zones, um, you know, if we if we want to uh, take a look at uh, uh, what we had from last year's model, you're looking at a little over 1,300 zones uh, for the uh, backlight in this television, which, you know, to be perfectly fair, it still cannot compete with an OLED. So we talked about uh, brightness being um, OLED's downfall. Uh, the full array number of zones is going to be QLED's downfall. Uh, with OLED, as you know, you, every single pixel is its own backlight source, and so you know you, you just can't compete having every pixel as a its own zone of, of brightness. Uh, but you know, 1,300 zones, significant improvement uh, over um, you know, previous uh, models, especially in the 4K versions. Uh, so you know, we'll see we'll see how that actually uh, works out in real life here. Uh, now the other thing that this television have, it has is uh, something called a real depth enhancer. Uh, and so really what that is, the, the uh, processor that ha has an algorithm in it which will take objects in the foreground uh, of, the, of the image and enhance its contrast. And that kind of gives the optical illusion of depth and kind of gives it a three-dimensional feel. Uh, so we'll see how that actually plays out um, you know, in, in, in real life, but uh, that's kind of the idea behind it. Uh, the other big thing that's changed here is uh, Dolby Atmos uh, sound support. Um, this is the first year that you've uh, got uh, Dolby Atmos sound uh, within the television, uh, which, uh, which is great. We still don't have Dolby Vision uh, HDR support, uh, which you know, is kind of what, what I've been uh, hoping for uh, for a while. Uh, but the fact that we've got Dolby Atmos sound um, kind of gives me a little bit of hope that maybe someday uh, they'll be able to, to, to get a deal with, uh, with Dolby to include Dolby Vision HDR. Uh, I know there's uh, a lot of political stuff uh, within this because Samsung has their own uh, HDR uh, format, but hopefully one day we'll all just be able to get along. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about the upscaling processor in this television. It's been upgraded to 20 neural networks to, um, to upscale images with, uh, with more clarity. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a thin television too, and we'll, we'll take a look once we get it unboxed. 
Uh, it's less than three quarters of an inch uh, thin, so it's so pretty good. And, and uh, I've got the uh, slim fit wall mount down here too, so I'll be able to mount it right up against uh, um, against the wall. Uh, we'll be able to see that once it's uh, installed and mounted. Uh, uh, you know, it's got the, the traditional anti-glare coating, which the previous uh, year's models have had as well. Um, and uh, uh, it also comes with the one connect box. Uh, they moved back to that. And uh, so all your uh, input ports, uh, all your USB ports, networking ports, all on a single box with a one connect cable that attaches to the back of the television. So we'll take a look at that once we get it unboxed. All right, let's open it up. So before I continue unboxing the television, I just wanted to go over what is in the, the top part uh, that we removed. Uh, so here, uh, obviously this is the, the major component. This is the one connect box. Uh, it's pretty thin. Um, it's a little bit more square than uh, uh, previous uh, models. Uh, was that they've uh, been a little bit more rectangular, but go ahead and show you the, the ports on the back. Uh, so we've got your uh, four HDMI 2.1s. Uh, number three has the uh, audio return channel. You've got three uh, USB ports. Uh, no USB-C on the One Connect box. Uh, this is the One Connect uh, port, and I'll talk about the cables in just a minute. Uh, you've got your antenna, um, your uh, wireless uh, Ethernet uh, connection, optical audio output. Um, and uh, it does have Wi-Fi 6E uh, on this model. All right, so the cables, we've got your uh, power cable. It comes with two One Connect cables. So uh, I'll tell you the reason why you get two. So uh, this television has a stand on it that actually has a mount for the One Connect box. So if you're using a stand and putting it on a table, um, or some sort of platform, you actually mount the One Connect box right on the back of the stand, and you only need a short cable to go from the box into the television. So that's what this is for here. That's the short cable there. And then you've also got a longer one uh, if you are uh, mounting this on a wall and you have the um, One Connect box in a, another room or in an AV cabinet down below. Um, it is a little bit thicker than um, the older One Connect cables, uh, but it's still same same concept. Uh, you've got your remote, uh, and this is a solar powered remote. You can see the solar uh, panel right there. Um, you can uh, recharge it. It's got a USB-C port on the bottom here. Uh, these are some spacers. If you wanted to wall mount this and put the One Connect box directly behind it, you can. Uh, put these spacers on in order to give you uh, enough room. Uh, just a plastic assembly cover and then part of the stand. The other part is right here. Uh, and then you've got your quick setup guide.
Uh, so I've got it repackaged up here uh, for the most part. Uh, I'm not going to actually install it yet. I've got a few people coming out in a few days to help me with that. I still want to uh, keep it protected until they get here. Uh, but that was uh, that was pretty much the unboxing and uh, all the uh, the contents uh, of the box. I'll have a separate video that kind of goes over uh, setup, installation, uh, things like that, and then actual performance of the television. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and, and finally, I do want to thank the uh, Insiders Network uh, again for giving me the opportunity to uh, test out and review this, uh, this television. And um, yeah, stay tuned for the uh, upcoming video. Thanks.